Nation. Covens in there. Europe, in America, and in Australia, and they have one right here. That whole bunch. The parties with the singing and the flute and the chanting. Those are espas or sabbaths. Or I don't get excited. Huh? Read what they do, Guy. They use blood in their rituals, and the blood that has the most power is baby's blood. Do you want to introduce? Sure. Hi, welcome to Covenham. This is a podcast uh, available through YouTube, through the Hex Education uh, channel there, and also on Facebook Live. We are an occult web series. I am Levi Rowland, and this is Brian Kane. We are both high priests in Alexandrian witchcraft. Brian is the teacher and high priest here at the New Orleans Coven, and today we are going to be talking about the differences between Alexandrian and Gardnerian witchcraft, as well as I'm sure a lot of other things that come up. Cool. So why don't we start uh, first with our tarot card. Absolutely. So deck for today is just, it's very popular. It's a reproduction. It's the golden tarot. It's a reproduction of the Visconti Sforza deck. It's not a very faithful reproduction. They took some liberties, but it's still a nice deck if you want sort of that Renaissance Italian feel. The Visconti Sforza is sort of one of the, one of the grandmothers of all modern tarot decks. How old is this one? Uh, this is Renaissance Italy, so I believe okay. it's the 15th century. It's one of the older ones then. Yep. Brian gave it a little knock. Oh, I like this. The Three of Cups. So the Three of Cups and the Rider Waite, if you're used to that, is the three sisters or the three um, women mm -hmm. in a circle. So um, a lot of the times associated with family gatherings, sisterhood, brotherhood, um, congenial groups, and it looks like a coven. It's three women holding a chalice in a lot of decks. So perfect card for today's subject. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love that. Fellowship. Fellowship. The fellowship of the... It's a good time to have a party. Brand. You know, it's going to be a great celebration of the, the solstice. holiday season. Yes. The solstice. And hello to everybody online. Yes, we see you. Hi, Gregory. Hi, Cami. Love all our comments. Remember, you can always ask questions either in the comments on Facebook or YouTube. We get them all, and we will try to answer all your questions. And since we don't know if we'll be on again before the holiday seasons, happy solstice, Kwanzaa, Christmas, Hanukkah, uh, birth of Mithra, Yule, all of those things. Yes, happy that. Mm -hmm. School um, vacation. So why don't we me. start out with our show and tell? Would you like to go first? He does this to me every time because he knows I forget the show and tell portion. So he's like, hey. Um, he's like, the tarot cards, my show. No, it's not. No, apparently it's not. Apparently my I guess cards if it's a new deck, it can don't be. Don't yeah. count. And I'm very upset about that. No, my tell is, is I've just been really, I do have an actual tell. I've been doing some investigation in divination. I'm thinking about some classes to teach here and whatnot. Um, and I Ching, you know, Chinese divination, all of that. Geomancy, which is a very cool system. And it's very interesting to see I don't know if any of you out there, I know we have a lot of tarot readers who watch and whatnot. Do you ever get tired of tarot sometimes? Like, I love it with all my heart. I've taught classes on tarot in our coven, but I like to break free from it every now and then so I can come back to it fresh. And so from a divination or a diviner perspective, I'm sure people out there in the comments, like, have all kinds of different methods that they love, runes, all kinds of things. But isn't it nice every now and then to kind of break away from that classic, rigid Western tarot that everybody knows? Yeah, yeah. It's, a, you know, when you're talking about the... the tarot system it's very developed it's been redeveloped mm -hmm. many times through different traditions and you know there there is a lot of sort of kinetic inspirational you know aspects to it it, it really isn't a rigid system unless you're working a particular system like Valid. the golden dawn um so you know i kind of look at the way i work at tarot uh, with tarot as being fluid though we've developed our sort of own witchcraft initiatory yep. perspective on it which i think a lot of witches do but what was that did you hit Oh, it's, it's the music the from the hex. door. Sorry, I was like, what's happening? We're picking up on something. Um, it's the spirit speaking right. to Brian. So for my show and tell, I thought, you know, uh, I was thinking about news, you know, like um, the community news going on lately. And I thought about uh, Witch Vox, uh, Thorin Mooney on her um, YouTube channel was talking a bit about the sadness of Witch Vox going away. And oh, that, that is sad. Um, and then, of course, there's this huge controversy, which may be dying down, mm -hmm. um, but it's a huge controversy that keeps coming up over and over and over again. It is always the same controversies that come up over and over again. In uh, new packages, but always the same. Initiation is usually a key uh, argument there. Who should be initiated, whether it's important or not, you know, that sort of thing. Um, Same-sex initiation, uh, the newest one is transsexual or non-binary initiation. Yeah, transgender and non-binary initiation. Don't always mm -hmm. keep up with the political terms. Um, I've always sort of said, you know, I follow the tradition because the tradition says that a man must initiate a woman and a woman must initiate a man. That goes for Gardnerian or Alexandrian. That's what the tradition says. Mm -hmm. 
granted, it was written at a time when, you know, obviously it was Gerald Gardner's perspective, and I doubt very much sexuality or transsexuals or non-binary even entered into his mind. I personally believe, even if he was somewhat homophobic, I personally believe it was really about keeping the balance. He didn't want to see that go off kilter. Mm-hmm. He wanted to that. see the system in place and thought it was fundamental to, to either what he had received or what he had constructed, depending on your viewpoint. So um, there's a huge controversy going on within the Gardnerian community right now, and for once, I am not a part of it. <laughs> I am not. I'm not one of the villains in the story. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so you know, kind of watching this, I think the bigger story there is, you know, what what are we as initiates doing online, having these warlike debates in front of non-initiates? It I, looks. I really think that should be kept behind uh, the scene. I realize I have been party to it a few times and guilty of it, um, generally because I was attacked, but it took me a while to learn to just not engage Mm -hmm. or to engage in such a way that it puts them in their court. Yeah, slip the ball back to them. Not really playing the game. Um, So I understand people make mistakes and what have you, but as as a tradition, that was another thing that came up with Thorne Mooney was Facebook. She said, when I want to feel bad about my tradition, I go see what they're doing on Facebook. When I want to feel bad about, well, just about anything, I go see what's going on yep. with it on Facebook. Social media. Uh, it doesn't make you look good to the seekers. It doesn't make our traditions look good. And mm-hmm. really the crux point is that it is completely up to the coven anyway. So regardless of what your opinion is or what you think the tradition should be doing, the high priest and the high priestess of each coven are going to be the ones that make the decision about who they initiate. It doesn't go beyond that. So intelligent discussion, when invited, is is great. But uh, attacking people, kicking them off pages... Um, you yeah, know, I'm not a fan. Trying to make yourself look good by, you know, being the righteous holy inquisitor, you know, that's... That's, I don't think it's a very good we idea. We don't need a Torquemada in it's, witchcraft. It's not going to ever take hold. What you said, you know? I think, is the most important thing, though, which is one of the things that infuriates me as a priest is this constant refrain that I will see in forums or on social media where it says, Gardnerians or Alexandrians do X or do Y or they're obsessed with B or A or C. Almost none of these people are initiates, though. Um, and so I'm always like, well, you're not even in our covens. How do you know? That's weird that you would assume that. And B, we don't have a pope. So this concept that there is this magisterium mm. that you can go to, well, we particularly don't have that in Alexandria, and we'll talk about, I'm sure, a little bit about American Gardnerians yeah. and how there are some different things there later in the show. But my point here is neither tradition has a Vatican. Mm-hmm. And so if you're Im- immediately assuming that we don't do something or that we have a very strict opinion about something, eh, may it, yes and no, but you, you can't yeah. understand it unless it's coven-based. It's kind of like Masonic lodges. Um, Everybody thinks they Every know. lodge gets to decide who goes into their lodge. Regardless of what all Masons think or what their ideals are, it is up to the lodge members to decide who's going to join their lodge. Other lodges don't really have control over that. They can protest, they can they can have their viewpoints, and that has happened too with... Yeah. Um, with gay people, I or think. Or atheists, um, like the French lodges. Yeah. So, you know, I've recently been approached by, probably within this last year, by transsexual people with interest. And so, you know, I have to navigate that issue when it comes up. I refuse to until that's actually an issue. You know, first, just like any other seeker, are they even right for the craft? Are they right for my group? If it comes down to that issue, then it's about, you know, it's about... The individuals involved, because I was speaking to this wonderful woman the uh, the other night. I'm obviously not going to divulge that, and I was very blunt with her, and I said, you know, sometimes I think that a lot of these social justice warrior um, debates going on aren't being brought by transsexuals, and I feel like the transsexuals are being used. And this, this was a trans woman, yeah. and she said, oh, absolutely. You know, and that's because the few transsexual friends I've had or acquaintances I've met haven't really been hung up on. Like, they know their reality. They know the reality of of what they're facing. They're usually very thick-skinned people, you know. Uh, It takes a lot to change your, you know, your gender. So, um, yeah, I think that you need to keep that in mind, too. If really you're going for same, same sex or if you're not transsexual... 
have you really been invited to go on an inquisition for the transsexuals? Because I know as a I gay person, keep using this word. if I, is that not a good word? Nobody you? uses that word anymore. Oh, well, like, sorry, transgender, transgender. Sorry. Um, no, if I would be sort of an. I love it when a heterosexual person is all for gay rights. But if I had people on the internet like going to war about gay issues and it was a bunch of straight people foaming at the mouth about it, I'd probably be a little put I, off. I think it's weird. I do. You know, I'd be like, this isn't really your, you're not the voice for this. But we're also, we have to necessitate a separation here between political active people and religion. Yeah. In the sense of like, you can be extraordinarily opinionated in certain political ideologies or concepts or whatever, or human rights, you know, let's take it away from the political to the personal, feminist issues, you know, gender issues, sexuality issues, how that's going to play out in a coven is going to be very different, because our covens are a little bit different than some of the larger pagan groups that you might have interacted with, some of our viewers might have interacted with, where there is a political aspect to it, they see themselves as instruments of change, you know, and for example, a really great example of this is the reclaiming tradition from Starhawk, which has a feminist, politically active ideology as part of it we don't so we are you know our ours is strictly religious and then whatever you want to do outside of that is your own business so we happen to have a lot of coven members or friends who are very politically active very leftist very outgoing very you know they move for for causes that matter to them environmentalism social justice but the religion itself is religious Mm -hmm. as opposed to some other pagan groups and and witchcraft groups where there is already an Uh, if it's not your cause don't kill your brothers and sisters over it you know, and stop being afraid of looking bad and stop thinking you're representing your whole tradition because you're not. None of us yeah, can you do can, that. You can represent your country. Um, you know, and I'd say that to Gerald Gardner or Alex Sanders. I'd say you don't represent all of us. You can't. Mm-hmm. You are our guiding lights. You are, you know, our founders. You've done a great job, but you can't control what Susie's doing in her coven. You're yep. not there. You know, um, it doesn't work well, that way. <clears throat> I always take it back, since a lot of our viewers probably grew up in Christian, we all almost grew up in Christendom, I'm sure we have a few viewers who grew up in non-Christian nations, but very few of them. Even if you're a non-believer or you weren't baptized, this is a Christian world. In the, we, are, we are basically congregationalists with a weird Episcopal tint. So we do have the Episcopal sense of where we have initiation. So you have initiation, so you have to be able to train your, trace, excuse me, your lineage. Mm-hmm. But we're congregationalists in the sense of each coven is autonomous. Like, our coven does not have to answer to some sort of grand high master of Alexander. The other bishops, perhaps. Yeah, the other you bishops, know, I perhaps. Mean, there elders. is that power. There is power, you know, um, in the sense that... But no central. If someone was really stepping out of line, I, you know, I think they would be, you know, called out. But I think the real security measure is a bad group or a bad initiate will fizzle out and will Always. not have an effect. Always. If you've got one bad coven, it's, you know, it's going to eventually deal with itself in most cases. I agree. So, especially nowadays when there's so much communication mm-hmm. and everything. Um, but moving on from that, um, you know, let's all try to get along. There's too few of us to fall out, and this is why we can't have nice things. It's true, we fact So, much. please don't use the transgendered people for your quarrels. And um, if your cause is really, um, you know, same-sex initiation or whatever it is, well, fine, you know, philosophize about that. But in the end of the day, unless you're leading a coven, you have no power over that whatsoever. So, so why, um, why drag yourself into yeah. the trenches? We do have a question. So Kelsey asked, talking about these issues of facing political problems, do you feel solitary practicing alleviates that issue? And do you believe that someone could not be right for the craft? Solitary practice alleviates what issue? Like having to deal with politics and and all of that. Well, I have a a really uh, douchey thing I like to say is that the the only thing that I uh, don't like about solitaires is they're not solitary enough. If you were really solitary, correct, it would alleviate that problem. But the solitary people who are online um, putting themselves in the quote-unquote pagan community or any community they can insert themselves in uh, aren't doing that, are they? No. And since Facebook is such a viper's den in most occasions, I mean, it has its positive uses, but, you know, it depends. If you're really solitary and you're not, con- you know, connecting with any other practitioners, then yes, it alleviates that problem. But I find that most people are not truly solitary mentally, you know, maybe perhaps magically, you know, 
Um, and in that case, you know, um, there's no way I can say it without sort of sounding rude, but it's solitary practitioners, practitioners are, it's all personal creation and personal development, what they've read from books. So they're not really practicing anything but what they've chosen to, mm -hmm. which may be bits and pieces of the truth. It may be bits and pieces of inspiration. It may be bits and pieces of nonsense. You know, I don't know. I'm not them. Uh, that's a whole other conversation. But no, I, I think that um, that's, uh, there's a lot of solitaries who are, are vocal about a lot of these issues. Yeah. I would take the second part of that More question. solitaries, I think, than initiates. I agree, are, actually. I think there are more solitaries out there proclaiming that they represent the craft than there are initiates. Agreed. Because there's just more of them, for one thing. Yeah. Um, I'll take the second part of that question. Do I think somebody can not be right for the craft? Absolutely. Um, this is not a religion for everyone. This is not a universalist religion. Some religions are. Christianity believes to be, not all aspects, Calvinist and whatnot, but the majority of Christians believe that it is a universalist religion. Buddhism is a universalist religion. The Dharma is for everyone. Witchcraft is not. We do not believe that every single person could benefit from this or should benefit from it. It is for certain people that are called to it and that would flourish within it. Um, it is So yes, there are some people, and we have a saying, not a saying necessarily, but something I've heard a lot of initiates say, you can smell it on people mm. when they're wrong. Yeah. Like they're Sometimes wrong. that's even an initiate. Um, you know, uh, so let's get on to the topic. So this evening's topic is Alexandrians versus Gardnerians, you know, witchcraft. Um, I think some people were expecting a death match, you know, uh, when we used the title uh, versus, not that we didn't know what we were doing. We, we, were, we want to talk about, you know, what the differences are. Yeah, not, not, like, not like an opposition. No. Uh, that being said, anyone who's a student history knows that there have been oppositions, but that was a long time ago, and things have changed. And the first disclaimer I want to make is that this has gotten so big that the Alexandrian tradition and the Gardnerian tradition have a lot of different diverse lineages. And there is a difference between lineages that developed in the UK and lineages that developed in America. Now, that's not to say Americans. You know, for instance, me and Levi are Americans. However, our lineage developed in the UK. The people we take our instruction from live there. Mm -hmm. And that's, we're very plugged into that way of practicing and thinking. And we're very fortunate that we've been blessed to, you know, be connected to some very wise priests and priestesses um, and get that instruction and as well as lucky as getting the historical sort of like plug-in of what was really going on outside of books you know so there is a strong tie into that original Alexandrian culture Gardnerian is even more diverse because Gardnerian developed in a way outside of Gardner through the distinct priestesses that he initiated you know uh, Patricia Crowther uh, Lois Bourne, uh, Ray Bone, yep. you know, um, forgetting one, I know I am. Oh, uh, Olwyn. Um, yeah, Lady Olwyn. So, you know, these distinct priestesses sort of had their own versions of what he'd given, not because just because they interpreted them differently, but because Gardner was sort of transforming things a little bit as he went along, as we all do, further yes. developing his craft. So, you know, from the first people that got craft from him things had been further developed by the time you know Olwyn got it from him and then of course you have those priestesses putting it through the lens of their coven mm -hmm. and their successive initiates doing that development where things change in America is that all of the original early Gardnerians and Alexandrians in America were Transplants of long distance training with very little communication at that time. It was a different time, no internet. So there was a lot of further development and interpretation that occurred in this country. And so you get you know, the American lines to be very different. Some of them are now reconnecting to the UK and trying to get back to the original. Mm -hmm. And some of them are like, you know what? Our line's done this for generations. We're good with that. They're all valid. Yeah. So in my book, Initiation to Witchcraft, I sort of tried to make the point that there was diversity even within these two big labels. But there are still certain commonalities that these Absolutely. labels have or are supposed to have. But as you would find, if you could really get the spotlight on everyone, that it is coven by coven as well. 
So sometimes covens do things that may not be sanctioned by the beliefs of their traditions, knowing or unknowing, but that happens in it both does. Alexandrian and Gardnerian as well. So the blanket statements that may be made here do not represent everyone, whether they should or not. Disclaimer, right? Yes. So, yeah. <coughs> so we're getting lots of hellos and merry meets from people. Hello to all of you watching. Merry meet. Love your questions. We do have one from Scotty that I'll take, um, that we can take. It says, have either of you ever pondered how the craft and your own personal path would be different if Sanders and Gardner had never been born? Like, how would the craft today be fundamentally different? Um, I'll answer first. There would be no craft. Um, let me be very clear here. I mean, and Brian can disagree if he, if he wants. Um, I, don't think, I don't think we have a big disagreement on this, but I do think people practiced what, what would be deemed witchcraft before Gerald Gardner, before the, the New Forest, and then before, of course, you know, Maxine and Alex, which came later. I do not believe that the, there was an organized religion of witchcraft, organized, um, that was passed on, kept, you know, projected forward, um, developed the way that it is now. So to your question, I probably wouldn't be a witch if it wasn't for Gerald and Doreen and Alex and Maxine. I think that independent witchcraft groups didn't, um, did not reproduce themselves very well. I think that most people eventually ended up in occult orders, which did like the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, the OTO, the various Rosicrucian groups that existed and still do. Um, but do I think craft as I know it would even exist without them? No. The ritual structure that we use that has been watered down and handed out to you know Neo-Wicca and, and various other new newer witchcraft traditions than our own, um, it's, our, it's all our ritual structure and whatnot that I do not think would have existed. And even though certain bits of it do come from other sources, from the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, from Crowley, from whatever, the way it was put together functioned and what was tapped into by Gerald Gardner, in my opinion, spiritually, like I really do believe he made contact, in, you know, to use a, a very odd sort of almost like visitation sounding term, but I do think he made contact with something. Without that contact that Gardner and the rest of our elders made, I don't think the modern goddess movement would even exist as much as it does. It might exist in some form, but I think that a lot of people owe a small debt or a very large debt of gratitude to our elders for creating what they did. And so I don't think it would exist at all as we know it. So my path wouldn't be this, most likely. Historically, I agree with Levi. And in a sense, it's an irrelevant question because that's not what happened. Um, you know, most people don't really know the history of the modern craft. And... You know, you can read lots of blogs, posts, and even books that are, you know, filled with opinions and contrary information. You know, there's lots of people who want to believe um, that Robert Cochran's work is relevant when, in fact, there's no one alive today who even knows what that looks like. You know, he didn't leave any legacies. He didn't leave anything but a couple letters he wrote to people, and I read them. They are complete nonsense. They're not a book. They're not instructions. Um, you know, he was somebody who came after Gardiner, and what he said was very much mimicking, you know, he still had a horned god, he still had a moon goddess, he still had a coven, he still had all these things. So um, I, anyone who's practicing modern witchcraft, even the people who are now calling themselves traditional witches um, and worshipping the devil, and actually, as far as I'm concerned, even uh, the Church of Satan, um, I think that all of these groups are in some way pilfering the work from the original craft elders. Or wouldn't exist without them. Yeah. So um, now spiritually, I think the gods would have chosen somebody else, but it does it's irrelevant. Um, whoever was working in the New Forest Coven or whoever was working religious witchcraft before Gardner, uh, we, you know, those answers are, are unknowable. Um, but let's just say it started with him. As an occultist, the proof is in the pudding. Um, Alexandrian and Gardnerian witchcraft are original traditions that have a continuity, and it, it spans the world. The you know, we have initiates yeah. in America, the UK, the Netherlands, you know, Brazil. Europe, Australia. You know, it is everywhere. It's ongoing, which there's power there. You can see it. It's tangible, and there's a system there that works, or it wouldn't be going on. Um, most traditions that you hear about are really just covens or a book someone wrote about that's not and a tradition at all. And they borrow heavily from our own. And yeah, they're, they're all pilfering. We're not saying that to say it's wrong. That's just the historical we truth. We pilfer too. Uh, to the show, you know, um, so let's hold off on questions for a minute so we don't, a lot of people have been waiting for this topic for a long time and I know there's some bated breath about it. 
So I want to talk more about what it is that Gerald Gardner started. And it wasn't Gardnerian witchcraft and it wasn't Alexandrian witchcraft. At that time in the 1950s, it was just called witchcraft. Mm -hmm. And it was presented as a religion and a priesthood to a great goddess and her consort, the horned god of death and resurrection. He wrote some books. He appeared on some media. His initiates did the same. You know, and there were certain beliefs that came forward. You know, likewise, I was saying recently at a soiree, Alex was also not initiated as a Gardnerian, nor was he initiated as an Alexandrian. They were all initiated into witchcraft. Mm -hmm. They all had the Book of Shadows. They all had the same god and goddess. They all had the same three degrees of initiation. They were working for the same book. They had the same techniques in magic. You know, they had the same ritual sabbats. They all met on the moons. They were a lunar mm-hmm. cult. They all worked naked. Yep. They all worked with the same tools. You know, this was the same religion and the same magical system. As it moved forward, as any movement does, the mm-hmm. religion of witchcraft started taking on new labels, new interpretations. And somewhere around the 70s and 80s started sort of cutting loose in the United States because of the publications of books. And so many witches were, you know, I think even then people won't like me saying this, trying to make a name for themselves. You know, I think it's real easy to say, oh, you know, they were just doing it for the craft. Well, if they were just doing it for the craft, they wouldn't have had all the how to do stuff in it, you know, because people want that. This is how you can do it too. You know, um, the standard of you need to be initiated for us to teach magic would have been maintained, but it was not. You know, so each of these authors started giving rituals that you could do Mm -hmm. too, and they'd give, you know, and they're being presented as this priest or this priestess of the religion of witchcraft, and they're showing you how to do it through books, which sends the message you can do it through. And that initiation doesn't matter. Pretty soon, you had people who were really good at reading, and they might have had other avenues of occults and a great imagination. They started developing their own systems, and they weren't getting initiated. And they would publish books. Mm-hmm. The average person initiated into, or the average person interested in witchcraft, obviously doesn't come with an instruction manual. They read books, and when the first books you read say initiation's not necessary. necessary yeah. Uh, you know, or people on Instagram. No one does that anymore. Chapter do one, your own you know? self-initiation. Yes. Um, if you're a part of a occult system or a religious system that says you can make it up as you go along, you're not a part of the system. Right? Mm-hmm. That's just logic. Agreed. Correct? So this is what's happened. And labels started developing. What we get different about Alexandrian Gardneri and a lot of these differences are more important than... I think the big difference now, if we're going to overall blanket it, is philosophy, right? I think there is a huge difference in philosophy. This is not to say, once again, blanket statement, that all Gardnerians feel the way that I'm going to say, and it's not to say that all Alexandrians feel the way, but when I'm looking at the original source material, you know, what Alex and Maxine were thinking and doing at the time, and what people like Ray Bone and Patricia Crowther are doing at the time. And these things are all public record. Yeah. You know, it's not something unveiled, you know. So, you know, it, the choices that Alex made, you know, that would have been a huge issue back then, which is funny because there's Gardnerians making way more controversial choices now than Alex ever did, or even Judy Harrow, if you know who she is. You know, Her big thing was proposing cross-gendered initiation and taking the scourge off the altar, and she was considered the heretic for that. You've got Gardnerians now wanting to do a lot more than that, and, you know, not my circus, not my monkeys. But at the time, Gardnerians were very still very close to Gardner's work, and there was no deviating from the lineage. Mm-hmm. Alex was the first one to say, I'm not doing that. You know, I'm going to do this instead. So certain things started developing, and he saw some aspects of the craft, based on his experience, I'm sure, as being controlling. Mm -hmm. So if he thought something was too controlling, he loved the idea of freedom in the craft. So these were tenets that started to build. You know, the first one was freedom. 
witches should be free. You know, he liked the the line, you know, it is a sign that ye be truly free, you should be naked in your rights. But that was analyzed as a philosophy. And so we started, you know, looking at the Book of Shadows through the lens of freedom. And that line is not one that emphasizes freedom, really, if you're forcing someone to do it. It's no longer, if it's not a choice, it's yes. not freedom. Gardenarians always work in their gardenarian circles in the nude. You know, that is not something that's deviated from. I'm it's not, not saying, secret. not saying they don't own robes. I'm not saying they never wear them. But it's not a gar- part of gardenarian praxis to wear robes, ever. So that changed for Alex. He, for certain occasions, started allowing people to wear robes. And he selected white robes. And I'm sure he selected white robes because of the fact that that is the historic robe worn by initiates in Greek, Roman, Egyptian, and Celtic culture. Once again, not saying they never wore any other colors, but historically those are the pr- that's the primary color used White for initiates period. and yeah. temple work in any of those cultures. So I believe that's why he selected it. There's nothing in the Book of Shadows that tells you to wear a white robe. The Book of Shadows tells you to be naked. You know, So this was something he chose to do for his witches. But there was a philosophy behind it, and I think that's the piece that people miss. It's not that we don't work wake naked, we do. You know, we work naked for our initiations, we work naked for when the magic calls for it, but the freedom of it is the choice to, I'm disrobing mm-hmm. in my worship, I'm disrobing in my magic, you know, and I don't know any Alexandrians who have any problem with being nude. However, we do have white robes and we wear them. Yes. But we're not wearing white robes because we've been told to wear white robes. We're wearing white robes because we appreciate the history of it and the philosophy behind it. The next philosophy that came into mind is power. And people can take this however they want to. Um, some gardenarians tend to be more on the worshipping side. And that can be through a lens, obviously, because I, I know Alexandrians who are as well. But it was a really big thing for Alex that the magical side of of witchcraft, the magical side of the craft, was emphasized, and that witches did not waste the power. So worship didn't matter unless there was power. Nothing you did mattered unless there was power, and that power was meant to be used. So we carry that in strength and pride, that that is one of our philosophies. If it does not have power, the things you say, you do, even what we're doing here, if it does not have power, it is meaningless. Power is not something to be afraid of. Power is effective, and we are witches. If you do not have power in something, you do not have it fertilized, it has no life. You know. So that is the other philosophy. A ritual without power is meaningless. We don't do empty ritual. We don't go through the motions. If something isn't working, we take it out. We don't use it, you know, and we use what does. So the last one, which is my favorite because it's the most narcissistic, is beauty. Never. Beauty. You know, it has been said Alexandrians are more aesthetically pleasing than Gardenarians. Um, Judgy. You know, I mean, we are pretty so usually. So Not judging. always. I know some, I know some at Gardenarians I'd sleep with. But, you know, that being said, um, what does that mean? What does that philosophy really mean? Once again, we want everything to be its best. If you're going to have a robe, make it as beautiful as you can. If you're going to create something, make it as beautiful as you can. If you're going to do a ritual, make it as beautiful as you can. Because the beauty is about the worship. Effort. You know, if you love something, you think it's beautiful. And if you love something, you want things to be beautiful for it. And you want to present the craft as beautiful. And this is where we get things like being polite, you know, and how we conduct ourselves or try to is because we want to be beautiful as well. So everything is controlled and contrived in that manner. So these philosophies are Alexandrian philosophies that make us different. It's this reason why we don't, for instance, a good story is scourging. Most people know that Gardnerians scourge for purification for every ritual. Alexandrians do not. This is a thing. Like, this is a big thing. And to me, this is kind of the big philosophical tell. Um, And I've got a counter story for that. But if you think that you need to scourge for purification, 
you're not following the Alexandrian philosophy because we don't think you need to. So I often, this conversation comes up with people of dual lineage who are like, well, when I'm in a Gardnerian circle, I scourge. When I'm in Alexandrian circle, I don't. Okay, so you're going through the motions. But what do you believe? What actually changes your soul? They don't get that. So th it's the beliefs that I think makes Gardnerians and Alexandrians different. We're the same religion. We're different castes of the priesthood. But there are philosophical beliefs that are contrary. It's perfectly okay. I'm not bashing one or the other. I've got no problem scourging. Um, I just don't think that it's necessary for purification. Um, now, that being said, and I won't drop names, I was talking to a coven. I know for a fact garden, a lot of Gardnerian covens who would want to kick people out for not scourging. Mm -hmm. But I did meet a high priest and a high priestess who said, we don't scourge every time. Because you, you couldn't. I mean, if you do um, as much as they originally did, it's all you do. So, like, I'm, you know, once again, not blanket statement. Would that be sanctioned? Probably not. That was one of the things they had against Judy Harrow is she didn't make somebody scourge at an initiation because they, you know, and I'm not saying she did the right thing or they didn't do the right thing. You know, I think that they're, you know, I think that people have to draw a line somewhere or there's no line at all. But once again, it is up to each coven. So I think the best you can do is be like, well, this coven does it that way. We don't agree with it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not Alexandrian. That's not Gardnerian. Likewise, I've heard of, Gar of Alexandrian covens that scourge for purification. And when called out on it, well, they like it. Well, I mean... Uh, some of my coven members would like it too, but not because of witchcraft, because they're kinks. You know, I'm it's... I'm going to go ahead and say he's not talking about me. <laughs> so, how dare you? you know, uh, once again, it's you know, on here. not a taboo. Uh, but there is a philosophical difference. But I think, personally, that Alexandrians and Gardnerians have way more in common than we do... Differences. And this is my worry about this show, actually. Um, I was worried about this episode. Not mm. worried, like, in a serious yeah. way, but if you've ever sat and watched a Lutheran and a Calvinist argue about soteriology, which is the doctrines of salvation, it is so annoying if you're not a part of it. And it's just like, you people are the same thing. Like, And, and they are, are infuriated by that, though. They're yeah. like, how dare you? Wars have been fought. Empires have been burned. And it's like... And so I do worry sometimes that when we talk about nuances, people are always like, I'm sorry, what now? Like, they are, But to Brian's point, what's more important is the philosophical feel and energetic workings yeah. of the traditions, and they are different in that aspect. And different Gardnerian yeah. lines are different as Very. well. You know, kind of one of the things we were talking about. Some Amer My book has been very well received by initiates, and I was very... Um, so humble. Very pleased. Well, it's one of the things I'm most proud of. You should be. I'm just um, there, there were uh, a few American Gardenarians took a little bit of umbrage about the things I said on there, but it was really quite hilarious because they would disagree with who made the changes. They didn't, and they couldn't, you know, trust me, I nothing in that book was not something I don't have inside knowledge to or didn't interview somebody from that line. I didn't get anything from a book in that part. Yeah, you no. know, that was from talking to, like, I, I have a lot of friends who are American uh, Gardenarians, and I have that lineage, too. Don't practice it. It's California, heretical, you know, because Judy Harrow. Yeah. Um, all of that, you know, it's not, I'm, I'm not California Gardenarian. It's in my lineage. A lot of people nowadays have that sort of cross-pollinization. All that means is that there are people in my upline who were practicing California Gardenarians at one point in time. And like most lineages, people tend to pass down what they have to the initiates, mm -hmm. you know. So I have access to a lot of that information. I mean, it's not something I use, um, you know, if it's got a good spell, sure. I mean, I've seen the books. But, yeah. Brian's been, you know, I mean, now that I'm fed, I've seen them. It's, it's there. Yeah. And, but what Brian's point is more important, which is this. It is not so much praxis, even though there are praxis differences involving scourging, involving nudity, involving lots of things, actually. It's feel and spiritual egregore and, and sort of philosophy, like how we approach things. That is quite different, it I is. feel. Mm -hmm. And you can feel that when you talk to Gardnerians. The best analogy I have is that is like Orthodox and Catholic Christians. They both see each other as valid. You know, they, they have some serious issues and they excommunicated their leaders in the 11th century, but they still see each other's sacraments as valid. Mm -hmm. But the philosophy behind them are radically different. Catholicism is heavily Augustinian and Thomist. Eastern philosophy is not. They weren't touched by Augustine at all, so they have a much different approach to salvation and whatnot. But they still are the same priesthood and the same church. They're just a divided church. And so that's kind of where we are at. 
But um, but it's like I said, it's more philosophical. And we're autonomous covens anyway. So yeah. I think for the most part nowadays, most gardenerians and Alexandrians get along just fine. But you know, considering what's going on with the rest of the witchcraft world, we definitely have way more in common than anyone else. Mm-hmm. You know, we're all initiates. We're all in the same religion. Um, you know, my my viewpoint is everyone else is not. You know, uh, people don't like to say that sort of thing. I think it's connected to the religion of witchcraft. If you worship our gods, and in some way practice the public you know, what has been publicly divulged, fine, I'll accept you as a, re- a member of the religion of witchcraft, then you're just not an initiate. Um, but, you know, a lot of people who call themselves witches are practicing something completely different, Yes. you know, um, than what we do. Um, but there is, you know, like I said, there is difference. Um, the American lines, for instance, um, come through Olwen and were brought here by Buckland, mm-hmm. Gardnerian. The American lines here in America were brought, um, I can't think of the guy's name, it's in my book, but, you know, brought in the same fashion by one gentleman in the, I think it's, uh, I can't think of it right now, I want to say it's Scott, but it's in my book, Um, brought here by him, and then the Kentish line was brought over too, all in the same way that Buckland brought it over. And they had generations of people practicing off what somebody gleaned in a few weeks and from writing letters it's and from having time, a book. Yeah, Skype. Um, phone calls were extremely expensive. All you had is letter writing. And as you know, there's some things you wouldn't mail. Um, so it's not bashing on any of them, but of course it developed uniquely in America. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think what's unique about the American Gardenarians is the American Gardenarians actually have a huge lineage in this country. American Gardenarians have the biggest craft lineage in this country. It far outnumbers Alexandrians. It far outnumbers any other form of Gardenarian. So they are a force in this country to be reckoned with in that sense. But they are also like the newest child on the block, even if they don't think so. They're like America. And they're, I mean, their very philosophy large, came new. after Alexandrian. You know, it just did in the way it evolved. And yes, like I said, some of their their scholars agree with me. You know, some of them told me the things that I decided to write down. Some of them have disagreed, but only on who made the changes, not that the changes were made. Yeah. And my crux was like, okay, well, if I find out I'm wrong about who made the changes, easy correction. But isn't the basic crux that the changes were, were made? made? Yeah, it's like the you know, like isn't baked. that what really matters? It. That doesn't make it invalid. It's then a choice to be like, oh, so this isn't the original secret name of the goddess. Yeah, I don't care who baked the pie. Do I, I want to use it or do, do I not? I think most of us in the craft who know both are now going, okay, fine, they're both the sacred names of the goddess. Treat both of them like sacred names of the goddess. But there are two, everyone. Um, you know, who decided to make that change? I suppose that's up for debate. I have my own opinions about who it was. So but Buckland had some strong opinions. I'm bringing this up as, a, as not to pick on anyone, but to speak that even internally within our lineages, Alexandrian, Gardnerian, there is great diversity. And that's a good thing sometimes. Yeah. So getting back to, so we've, we went over the major Ooh, Can we play the game before questions? Well, we're you a bit do, far behind. Let's, let's, right, let's do questions and we'll play the game. Because right. they've been laying there for a while and you've been so patient. Um, well, a couple I just wanted to make sure we addressed the topic because yeah. on so many shows we don't. We do tend to go yeah. off on tangents. That's partially my fault too. Not as bad as him, but I'm so guilty. Um, Jorge Gradilla said, um, joking, they said he was expecting a mud fight. No, no, no. No vamos a luchar. Not in that way. But Light of Diana had a good one because you mentioned it already. Um, I've seen Covens describe themselves as dual lineage, Alexander and Gardnerian. Can we speak on that just a bit since we already covered it a touch? The uh, Algar tradition. There are uh, lots of witches that have multiple lineages but as i was sort of saying i i think that the training the style and the philosophies are unique you know the way for instance a temple of the mother lineage coven works from a you know long island line coven are extremely different Mm -hmm. so one coven could not be doing both and if they're trying to do both, it means they're mixing them up and they've become something else. And one of them will, will get diminished. Yes, or both. Yeah. Or, or both. both sometimes. Or um, both. There was a movement in New York uh, started by a woman named Mary um, Nesnik, and they called it the Algards because she mm-hmm. had dual lineage from Buckland and, in a way, Alex. And Alex had named her uh, the 
the Witch Queen of New York, or some people say the Witch Queen of America, who knows. Um, Lofty. But she created the Algard tradition, and it was an attempt to you know, merge the two traditions, and neither tradition received that very well. And so they like went after it, and of course it didn't, it didn't survive or thrive. But it's funny nowadays that so many people make that claim. I think even among initiates, you have FOMO, fear of missing out. Um, I know a lot about certain Gardnerian lineages, but do you know what I don't know? What it's like to be in it. Yeah. So I don't, you know, I'm quite sure there are things about the Long Island tradition I do not know. I'm quite sure there are practices I do not know. I'm quite sure that's true about the California line, which I actually am lineage from, because mm-hmm. I've never practiced within a California Gardnerian coven. Yes, I have their Book of Shadows. Yes, I have knowledge from Upline. Yes, I've asked questions and I know things. Um, yes, we share stories, but I've never actually experienced it as a living tradition. Um, so I think that's pretty true of most people. So it's fine that they have dual lineage, but in, if they're saying that, my only red flag is because I have it and I just don't generally say it. You don't have it on my you know, thing anymore. I did it very early on and learned real quickly that wasn't a very good idea. Yeah. Um, I think that it's, what are they really doing? So if you are approach a coven, you want to get initiated and they have dual lineage, I would say, which one do you practice? If they say both, I'd say when. Are they having two full moons? Are they having two sabbats? Are they really doing both? Uh, mixing the drinks, I think, it, it doesn't serve any lineage. At this point, I do think all those lineages should be honored. Mm-hmm. If you're a Long Island and that's what you want to be, I think you should be doing it the way that you're supposed to do it. And I'm going to say something here that might not be popular, but I don't care. Unity is often boring. So um, the best example of how this works out in the real world in much larger religions, because one of the things that I like to remind myself to keep myself humble is witchcraft is a tiny religion, um, and I like it that way. But it is small, and so I have to look at larger examples to sort of make a point sometimes. Protestant Christianity of the mainline tradition is dying across the Western world. Catholicism is actually growing in certain places. And he loves this analogy. I love this analogy. Evangelical Christianity is growing like wildfire. But like Methodist, Presbyterians, Lutherans, the sort of traditionally European, American, dominant Protestant churches are dying in droves. They, they can't even keep the doors open in their churches. And one of the things that has become a movement in Christianity right now is the Uniting Churches movement. This is a big thing in France where they just collapsed all the Lutheran and Calvinist Protestants into l'Église Protestante Unie or whatever. Um, these churches are dying because they're boring, because they basically sacrificed all of the things that made them special, all of the unique practices, unique traditions, unique philosophies that made them separate, that yes, did cause division sometimes and problems, but that also made them interesting. They got rid of all that. And so now what are they? They're a bland group of people that don't kind of accomplish anything because it's just boring. Like, And I don't want witchcraft to become that. Our set, our differences sometimes do cause division, but they're fun and they're unique and they make us special. And, you know, we have a lot of fun with it. Like, I don't think most Alexandrian and Gardnerians are any longer the Hatfields and McCoys. No. Just like at one point in time in America, it was the Long Island versus California. Those things linger. There are still Gardnerians and Alexandrians who are kind of in that headspace, and there are still Long Island people and California people still in that headspace. I've talked to all of these people, but for the most part, not, you know, but we still have fun with it. You know, yeah, I, I always say Gardnerians are almost as good as we are. That's you know, uh, yeah. they like to bash themselves in the head. You know, they might like to say, uh, you're just a Gardnerian who likes too much incense, you know, all these Valid. sorts of things. Valid. So, you know, it's more fun now, tongue-in-cheek, I think, than Agreed. anything else. Yeah. So Alex asked a great question. Is there any evidence to which Book of Shadows Alex initially received when he was initiated? Yes, I have it. Yeah, same. Um, <laughs> there is a lot of rumors about it that are false, and I'm, I can't, I, unfortunately I'm not going to really get too yeah, into that because question. it's troubling. Um, you know... There have been leakages of the Gardnerian Book of Shadows, and some people have developed very bizarre theories around Alex's book and these leakages. They are bizarre theories. I have seen almost all of these materials and can tell you with 100% certainty it's not uh, Alexander's Book of Shadows. Um, Levi and I's book comes from someone who copied their book directly from Maxine, and I presume her copy is the same as Alex's, um, the first book. So, you know, um, 
It is the same first book that most Gardenarians received. There's not a difference. You know, that first book of shadows is the first book of shadows. The difference is some lineages added on to that book of shadows and some lineages came up with whole entire other books. You know, yeah. that happened with Alexandria and we now have a second book. So our first book is actually the Gardenarian, the Gardenarian book, of book of Shadows. Our yeah. second book is very uniquely an Alexandrian book of Shadows, though it does definitely contain Gardenarian material within it. Um, but the core book is the same. Let me just put it this way, because I, I agree with Brian, this is a tricky topic as initiates. I've never met a Gardenarian of any line with whom I could not have a serious conversation we, and where we would not understand one another. You know, like, so that should tell you something, right? Um, if so you're inquiring as to where Gardiner got his Book of Shadows, I believe he got it from Patricia Crowther's coven. Um, personally, I think he was initiated into her coven. I also think he worked with other Gardinerians later on. You know, there's lots of things that go into that. But if you study the book and some of the things that, that, are, that are said, you know... Um, Things have been further developed, even within Patricia's book. Patricia has added a lot of material to her Book of Shadows. Um, the American Book of Shadows is like 900 pages. And most of that is attributed to a priest and priestess called Theos and Phoenix. But they just added a lot. They didn't take away the original material. They mm -hmm. just added and added and added for you know, whatever reason. And you know whether their initiates are confused about that or not, I don't know. But um, I think it might be overwhelming for some Could people. Be. We work with the first book for first degrees, and people who get their second and third begin copying the second book, which is all, like everything else, just additional material. In truth, there is only that one book of shadows. Yep. And everything is, else is additional it's material. It's pretty impressive, to be honest, how how it is kept. Like, yep. you know, people will, will nitpick the smallest things, but from all the Gardnerians I've met, Alexandrians, British, American, Canadian, Dutch, like, they're the same. Like, I mean, there are. it's pretty impressive to me. So somebody asked a very good question that I wanted to hit on. Teresa asked, advice for someone who was initiated first degree and then left coven for ethical reasons and are that dreaded solitary, how do they maintain connection to the Alexandrian tradition? Um, find another coven. Yeah. Um, whether or not your first degree initiation would be considered valid is just if you can get it vouched. Yep. They're not going to believe you that you got your first degree initiation just because you said so. Um, I have someone who came into my coven under the same situation, mm -hmm. and I, you know, said, who were your initiators? And I, I found them, because I can do that. And I said, did you initiate this person? And they said, yes. And they told me what they thought about him. And I made the decision to bring him in, because he was already Alexandrian. Mm -hmm. So he was just brought in as already being a first. He just joined the coven. Um, for his own reasons, he's, you know, made his own choices, and he's definitely in our lineage now. But... Um, that's that's really coven. You know they'll want proof that you're Alexandria, and if you can't prove it, then you're going to have to get reinitiated. Yes. If you can't prove your initiation, it won't work in any situation as a community. Regardless it would still spiritually be there, but you can't expect people to believe it because. And you know, I believe that's what Alex faced. To be honest with you, <laughs> is you know, if someone's saying no, I didn't initiate this person, then what else are you going to do? Yeah, <laughs> like, and so, I mean, honestly, that is the thing, yeah, find new yeah. teachers, find new covenants. Yeah. It's very hard to connect to it outside of that. We are not really built for doing it outside of that mm -hmm. structure. So um, two more, and then we're caught up. Tina asked, is an Alexandrian more respected or more well-known than Gardnerian? Um, well, more respected, I God, I hope so. By like, whom? Um, By I'm, whom? It's a, I'm joking. Uh, um, more well-known, no, um, in the sense that, like, I mean, getting there, but his, there are more Gardnerians than Alexandrians. Which is actually quite funny because the rumor has always been that there are more Alexandrians than Gardnerians. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's true. I don't either. I think that there are a lot of dual lineages who claim Alexandrian, but I think that Alexandrians are in lesser numbers. At one point in time, that was true because Alex initiated a lot of a people. A lot of people instead of the Ferraris. Um, yeah. You know, I think the difference, what you get there, is that there are not very many current spokesmen of the Gardenarian tradition. So it's considered by some people to be a dinosaur. It's a perfectly living tradition. Very alive. But very for some alive. reason, they, you know, went through this phase of like, we shouldn't be writing books. We shouldn't be on TV. So we've got a few that do now. You know, I'm glad about that. We've got Jason Mankey. We've got Thorne Mooney, who, you know, they're not necessarily writing about Gardenarian witchcraft, but none of us do that. 
Um, you know, I wrote a book recently. You know, once again, it's not about... Well, I mean, it is about gardening. It's about mystery craft. But, um, you know, once again, it's not the Alexandrian tradition. I think that um, Alexandrians have a tendency to like the stage and the platform, and we don't make any apologies about it. This is valid. So I think you've had a consistent... I think every time it seems like the Alexandrian tradition's fading off, it pops back up into the spotlight mm-hmm. again. Um, I think Gardnerian's doing that a little right now, too. Yes, subtly, Mooney, subtly, You've got yes. the Gardnerian Riches yeah. blog. Um, yeah. I do think it's making a, a change as well. Oh, um, the, if it's the blog you're talking about, that's written by a real idiot. It, I don't know which one yeah. you're talking about, but I'm just saying there's a lot more presence than there used to be in the, in the sphere. I think the newer generations are getting it. Um... I think the newer generations are getting it, and I think they're starting to realize that, you know, here's the thing, the very first publicity, which is for all Gardnerians. Like I said, I don't know when it became the thing to drop the baton, but Alex wasn't afraid of picking it up. Yeah, <laughs> no, right. like, and, you. you know... Um, I'll be on a stage with Sharon Tate. Alexandrians Bye. have been picking it up whenever they can ever since. You know, criticize us as you might for it. It happens to be true. It's probably that power thing. We like it in every form. I mean, Maxine and so, Alex were hanging out with like rock stars and yes. Sharon Tate. Uh, and we like them. power. We're greedy for it, and it can come in any form. Um, so you know, but we also are servants as well. So I think that those people who are public spokesmen have a unique opportunity to represent the craft. I think where the mistake comes into play sometimes is when they think they have the responsibility to represent the pagan community. Mm-hmm. And I think you'll find Alexandrians just are not apologetic. And honestly, and I keep telling everyone this, people don't want to believe me, people love it. Most people coming into the occult, most people coming into the general world of magic think the same thing we do about the pagan community. You know? It's not inspiring. That being said, we're going to play a game. All right. So I, I, okay. I made a little game, like a talk show game for Levi, and it's okay. called Is Levi. Gardenarian, Alexandrian, or a park pagan. Oh, God. <laughs> so He's you, nervous. That's what he is. He's nervous. You two can play at home as well and find Great. out what you are. There's only like seven questions. Oh, thank God. So you get to pick A, B, and C. So you just record which one you picked. At the end, we tally up the points and see what you are. Oh, God. What if I'm the wrong thing? <laughs> <laughs> then you're over. You're done. Then I'm done. It's okay, over. Okay, so leave. we're going to start now. Are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. This, I'm is, ready. The, this is the nerdy thing. Da-da. All right, finish this sentence. Okay. The god and goddess are A, powerful symbols used to represent polarity in our ritual praxis. Okay. B, gods of witchcraft. Don't look. Okay, okay, okay. C, I am no longer Wiccan. I am a Norse polytheist. (laughs) Um, As tempting as it is, great rune warden, um, to go with the other one. The gods are the gods of witchcraft. So you select B. Right. I select B. So the gods right. are the gods. Next, they are not psychological archetypes only. Okay. What do you put in your ritual chalice? Ooh. A. Any spirits will do. No. B. A bottle of red wine. <laughs> this is a cheat question. <laughs> or C. Something someone donated from the nearest convenience store. Diet Coke. Um. <laughs> wine. Always wine. B again. Mm-hmm. I bet um, they're all. I have a this is like supposed to be comedic. Uh-huh. Don't tell. Don't ruin things. Don't right. ruin the joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next. Okay. A coven is a a magical family. Ew. B priesthood. C inclusive and democratic. Oh God, no. <laughs> That makes it so, oh no. Um, Did I make mm-mm. this all too obvious? You made this way too obvious. <laughs> and also everybody knows I'm, an, I'm, I'm kind of a leader. Um A coven is a priesthood. All right. B again. You keep doing this B I thing. know. All right. Next. <clears throat> a consistent feature in your ritual is A, nudity. B, I can't see past the incense smoke. You know it's B. Why are you even asking? <laughs> What's your horrible scene? What's your horrible scene? C, Someone reading off a piece of paper. I hate that. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm uh, a nerd. I know I am a nerd. All right. You're so proud Which of yourself. One? Look how smug he is. <laughs> it's the incense smoke, Debbie. Like, All right. Be again. All right. So only two more left, everyone. So Ooh. Be honest with your answers. I'm so honest. Might reveal your future. So next, when a witch war breaks out 
In your community, it is like A, a holy inquisition. Okay. B. Brian started it. A silent grudge until it's not. B. Oh, God. (laughs) Or C. Cyberbullying on all social media platforms. It's B. Um, Let me tell you, though, the Alexandrian way of doing... um, it's just shit. How do you know B means Alexandria? It's you, that, it's that please. It's we haven't that, answered this yet. <laughs> it's that 100%, just like, we have a joke that in our lineage that we kind of joke about a lot where the meanest thing you can say in our tradition is watch somebody just mean you. Oh, is that how you do it? Is that how you do it? <laughs> okay, oh. last one. Okay. The difference between the word witch and Wicca. All right. A, Wicca is an old word for witch, originally spelled with one C. No. B, Wicca is an old word for witch, originally spelled with two C's. How many? Or C, Wicca is a religion. This is the hill? (laughs) C, Wicca is a religion. Witchcraft is a practice. I I, hate that. I used to be Wiccan, but now I'm a heathenistic chaos magician. (laughs) You know it's B. And also, this is the hill that Brian Kane is going to die on. Okay. Is this Wicca thing. We're done. So... If you had more A's than B's and C's, you are Gardenarian. If you had more B's than A's and C's, you are Alexandrian. Mm -hmm. If you had more C's, please stop watching our show. Um, Park Park Pagan. Okay. So, God bless. (laughs) Anyway, there were good I tried to be funny. No, they're good. I liked it. Um, So, Frank asked a question. It was supposed to be entertaining. I liked it. Frank, it's cheating because I knew the answers. Frank asked a question I think you'll love. I was hoping you would. Thank God, right? I mean, I am trained. Um, Frank asked a question I think you'll love. How would you describe or compare the energy generated in an Alexandrian circle versus a Gardnerian one? Someone once described the Alexandrian energy as high voltage and Gardnerian as gentler. Um, I think I would actually kind of agree. Mm. Um, You know, not always. You know, there's a consistency to anything. But yes... um, my experience is that in many Gardnerian circles, it's like a, a, a trickle of water turning into a fountain that becomes a geyser, not less powerful. Um, and Alexandrian circle can be like a storm. Um, you know, not uh, it's the way the ritual flows, I think, though, yeah. and the training. I don't think it's... I don't think either one is more effective. If you've got good witches, you've got good witches. And... I imagine that many of us can do both if we alter the ritual. You know, in yeah. Frederick LeMond's book, 50 Years of Wicca, he's one of the oldest living Gardnerians alive, if he's still alive. But he's, I whether, think he is. I think he's still alive. He's one of the oldest living initiates. That video I showed you not long ago, he was using a different name. He was using, but it's him. It was him. I didn't yeah. realize it. He is one of the he oldest He went batshit crazy at the end. Like, it was amazing. I know. And at the very end, it went batshit crazy. He like is the one last, of the oldest yeah. living initiates, though. Who he was, was great. there for Patricia and Lois and all of it. And most of what he said, he could he have been Alex. Alexandrian. He I met know. Alex yeah, and yeah. Maxine, and he says something about him I find interesting. He says after he and his partner at the time left, he said... That man is the most powerful witch I've ever met, but he doesn't know what to do with what he has. So I think there's always been this image of Alexandrians as like high energy, high voltage, high power. And I think that had a lot to do with the fact, well, A, I think we have that juice. I mean, spiritually, I felt it in our own circles. But take that out of it and just look at it from the outside looking in. Maxine was naked on stage with Black Widow. You know what I mean? Like, it, it was, And is it just me, or were there a lot of hot guys in Black Widow? There's a lot of hot people around Alex and Maxine in general, yeah, let's be honest. Like, there was just this whole energy of the swinging 60s and London, and it was the sexual revolution, and Alex and Maxine were these wild and, and intelligent and fun witches and whatever, and they were arresting in a way. And I think that's one of the reasons Alexandria and witchcraft have that rock and roll image to it that I actually kind of enjoy. Because we're rock stars, and that's why we like to be thin and pretty. Okay, well, um, so, yeah. we haven't actually said this, but if you'd like to call in with any comments or questions... Um, you can call us at 504-321-3472. We always welcome calls. We don't get a whole lot. Beautiful women always, are waiting to answer it always, it always sort of okay. spices things up. Brian yeah. wants to know, in regards to training, has training structure been kept the same or has it changed in this new era of instant certification? How does Alexandrian view this new generation? Well, for us, you know, we come from, you know, we are more a product of Maxine's further development than I think we are of Alexander's original core. Hopefully I don't get in trouble for saying that. Um, You know, but I do. I do think we're a bit more of a product of Maxine because we do come down line from the temple of the mother. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, I would agree with that. lineage. So, um, but I don't think, you know, I think Alex's training was more like the chaotic magician. If you were there, you got it. If you weren't, you didn't. And if he wasn't doing it at the time, too bad. Um, I think that Maxine was had developed a more organized system of training. And I think that, you know, our teachers are excellent teachers. And so we learned how to teach from them. So we're, you know, we're, training is the most important thing in our coven. In fact, I feel like if you're going to get initiated to a coven and they don't bring up rigorous training, you probably aren't going to get it. You know, a lot of covens, unfortunately, even with great lineage, are just like, you know, we're going to worship the goddess. Uh, let's have, you know, let's, let's go, you know, have a, a theater night or let's, you know, let's sit around doing a craft project together or go have coffee. You know, um, that's not working in a no. coven you know we meet weekly um and so if it's not a ritual it's not ritual training it's hermetics or some sort of lecture training going on some sort of occult training so every week there is training mm -hmm. and there's high expectations for what people have to do to to you know and receive further initiations as for that era of certifications and whatnot we don't really do that no. Um, distance can be a thing. Yeah. It can. That's up to each other. What company. do you mean by certification? Like, where you can online schools of witchcraft. Oh, and we, like, that's foreign to us. We all do of that. that is, you know, I'm going to say it just point blank. You know, just because somebody says they're practicing witchcraft or they're a witch or even Wicca or Wiccan does not mean the same thing. So especially, especially I Taz. really don't look at anything outside of Gardnerian or Alexandrian as being on the same page. You know, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It doesn't mean honest. it might have correlations. But if you come to me and you're like, you know, I'm a third degree of the Karelian tradition, I'm going to be like, okay, that's great. You're not connected to me. If you come to me and say, you know, someone in my upline used to be Gardnerian or somewhere up in my upline they used to be Alexandrian, be, that's great. You're not connected to me. I view it the way Catholics view Mormons. Yeah. You're using some similar language, yeah. but I ain't going to the temple. Like... It's not an anti thing. If someone's no. happy with that tradition, it's fine. But it's Love not. It. You know, um, I'd say one thing about modern labels: the reason we have to use now Gardnerian and Alexandrian witchcraft or British traditional witchcraft, uh, Wicca and witch don't work. I mean, I know some people try to be like, "Well, you're Wicca." And it's like, how can you even try to use that label when you've got all the park pagans using it? You expect us to jump on board with yeah. that? Um, both Wicca and witchcraft are being used as blanket terms for a bunch of things they originally weren't. Yes. So we now have to use the labels of Alexandria and Gardnerian craft because that's the only way to really truly distinguish it. You know, green witchcraft doesn't mean anything. If you work with herbs, most witches do. Yeah. Uh, traditional witchcraft, what tradition? You know, I know. You know, and, and is it, like Brian said, it's not even sometimes that I'm here to judge. It's that I'm just exhausted and I'm doing my own work, and I do not have time to sit and, and like validate other people. And if you really need that, yeah. that's on you. Yeah, we're not really here to validate people. You know, that's and on you. We're not good at it. <laughs> so we, you yeah, know, we're like, the wrong people to ask. Yeah, we're not good at it. We don't really yeah. give off that lovey uh, duffy vibe. Christian so, says I am nurturing like a cobra. So, in other words, not. Um, actually, in some stories, they are. So, so somebody. Um, yeah, I don't eat my to. eggs. You know, there's some, there's some. So somebody said, I wanted to find it real quick. Um, Edward had two questions I wanted to hit on. Edward said, well, one of them was a statement. One of them was a question. Edward said, um, it's also clicky and dividing when we were talking about all the groups. Um, and so what? Clicky and dividing. Uh, and that is unfortunately what social media has created a lot of it up. But I will uh, say yeah. this. I actually have never met anybody more divisive, hateful, clickish and mean than a solitary, uninitiated neo-pagan. It's true. It's true. The, all the initiates I know... They're looking they for joke. something to hate on. So all of these initiates I know, no. we joke about, oh, the well, Gardnerian. There are some mean this, ones, too. They're the usually bad. mean to their own, though. That's exactly. the thing. Most Gardnerians are mean to other Gardnerians. But there's Most still Alexandrians like mean to solidarity yeah. in, the, yeah. in the craft. And I have so much fun talking to Gardnerians and other Alexandrians of different lives. It's that you. It's that solitary keyboard warrior who's read a few books, who's convinced that there's something that is the meanest snake amongst them, mm -hmm. and the most divisive, the most cliquish, the most which usually comes from insecurity. Yeah, you know, if you feel like someone's devalidating you, then you've got to devalidate them. You know, you got to get them before they try to get you, because that's how you done get got. 
you know. Wow. And yeah, you um, done, you done did get yes, down in the I, cotton. I think that it's really about it's insecurity and you know validity. Yeah, uh, we're not. We don't care if you call yourself a witch. We, you know, it, if you're on a magical journey of any kind, we respect you. We're just, you know, I really don't think that magical occult witchcraft pagan inclusive. Like it's inclusivity. Inclusivity. I can't even say it. It's, you're doing great. It's, it's not healthy, nor is it realistic. No, because you always end up losing something. I, I think that it's not healthy. It's not realistic. I think that honoring our diversity and honor, honoring people's choices, like if you choose to be solitary, cool. I'm not ever going to be like, you shouldn't be doing that. No, we're not going to like tell you it's wrong. But don't get mad when I say I don't consider it witchcraft because I'm talking about something else and probably to a particular audience. And that's okay you know, too. you could be sitting there going, "I'm a witch. I don't think covens are even real. I think it's all made up." You know, fine. You know, we can have these opinions and they can even become healthy debates, but I think this idea that we all have to accept each other is just unrealistic and unhealthy and it also hurts yeah. and nobody's happy it leaves a table full of grumpy people not a table of, it's not a table of inclusivity actually it's a table of like mediocre tolerance and that's gross I've been to those pagan events where every single word sentence structure idea is policed to inclusive, death inclusive I can say it. Yeah. inclusivity Very thank you well done it's like it's so like <laughs> boring though at the end of the day I don't even I'm not even inclusive with my own coven no, he's hateful. Yeah. So um, one that I liked here was, um, oh, Edward did have a good question, and I think you'll answer this better than I do. Uh, the Central Valley Wiccan lines, he says, from California, I believe they are related. He says they are related to Gardnerian. No. California line, right? No. Not at all? I, I to this day, you know, without getting into it, uh, yeah, no. Um, here is the thing. If you had someone in your upline that used to be something, right, and then they stopped being that thing. You don't get to be that thing because they used to be it. So if I used to be a Gardenarian high priest, that doesn't make you a Gardenarian high priest. I was a trained Especially if you weren't trained or initiated into yeah. that. I was trained Gard Alexandrian. I have found that lineages that claim Gardenarian or Alexandrian witchcraft, when you really dig it up, are almost all lying. That doesn't mean the people now are lying because they were told that. But I'll tell you this. No Gardnerian or Alexandrian initiate leaves their initiatory tradition for something else in most cases. And if they did, it would be because they thought that was no longer valid and they wanted to go on and do something else. Yeah. They wouldn't be claiming that lineage for their new initiates if they thought it was a bunch of, you know, it just doesn't happen. Usually I find it's a way to validate that lineage and it's almost 99.9% .9 of the time incorrect. And I don't want to call out spades, but I've uncovered some of this recently with several American lines. Central Valley Wicca, um, I don't believe it has any lineage whatsoever. In, an, in that context. I think that it may have, you know, maybe somebody sat on Buckland's chair once, you know. But also it's one of those things of, like Brian is saying, this isn't just like ipso facto. So what I mean by that is, it's like, if, if, if I go, let's say tomorrow, I mean, I'm a third degree Alexandrian, but let's say I leave the tradition, mm -hmm. I don't practice Alexandrian anymore, I go and become, um, what, let's get really away from it, not Garnerian, I go and become OTO. No, that doesn't work because they have a governing body. I go become the Welsh tradition, right? We have a couple friends who are in the Welsh tradition in Salem. Let's say I go become the Welsh tradition. And then I don't ever talk about Alexandrian training. I don't bring it up. I don't train my initiates Alexandrian. I only initiate people in the Welsh tradition format with the Welsh but tradition. 60 years training. later, people are going, we're also Well, we're Alexandrians. Alexandrians. Well, no, you're not, yeah. right? You know, even even though I had the lineage, Even if there was an Alexandrian or Gardnerian involved in that time, if they weren't practicing and passing it on, correctly through those hold. initiations. If it wasn't an Alexandrian or Gardnerian initiation consistently, it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. I can tell you whatever they're practicing is not what we practice and it does not resemble what we practice at all. That is another thing. That it resembles what's been published in books, which is telling. Some people think yeah. that they know everything we do and then I'll see their practice and it's so foreign to me and it really does make me realize how But they're sure. 
But they're sure, right? They're, they're sure. so sure. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, wait, And you no. can't tell them otherwise. No, they won't yeah. listen, so why, why waste your breath? Um, that happens a lot. But that I was mean, a good question. Yeah. Interesting question. Sorry, I didn't mean to get so fundamental about it. Yeah. So, um, so somebody says, this is a great question. Rose says, forgive ignorance. There's no ignorance. Um, new to this stuff, if you wouldn't consider non-Gardnerian or non-Alexandrian witchcraft, witchcraft, what word or phrase would you use to describe pre-Gardnerian practices and folk practices? Well, let me, can I answer that first? Sure. Um, so, for myself, personally, the Alexandrian and the Gardnerian tradition originally did have the model that initiation was required to make you a witch. Most initiates now, in some way, step outside of that line, at least publicly, because it's, you know, upsets apple carts. For me, personally, I think you can, I think it's perfectly okay for someone to call themselves a witch now if they practice the religion of witchcraft in some form, mm -hmm. meaning that they believe in the goddess and the god, that they believe, if you don't believe in the goddess, I don't think you're a witch. Um, they believe in magic, if you don't believe in magic, I don't think you're a witch. I don't think witchcraft means magic, but I think witches practice magic. Okay. And I believe magic is a part of the religion. I believe it's a magical religion. I think that certain things like the eight Sabbaths, those common things, are parts of it. But really, for me, it's the gods, mm -hmm. you know, and magic itself that are probably the big sticking points to me, calling it the religion sure. of witchcraft. Um, it doesn't make you a priest or priestess or knowledgeable, but, you know, I'm, I'm fine with that. There are lots of people. I think I practiced the religion of witchcraft before I was initiated. Um, folk magic just means magic of the people, and it's all over the world. It doesn't make you a witch, you know. And I think what we need to realize is that in any historical context, it wouldn't classify as witchcraft, even by the church. The church did not burn people or hang people for practicing folk magic. You'd be stuck in the stocks, you might be whipped, you might be penance, chastised, you might have to pray a lot, Fasting. you might have to pay a fine, but you would not be put in the stocks, you know, you would not be hung or burned for, for practicing folk magic. It was not considered witchcraft. Folk magic is just magic mm -hmm. of the people. Sorcery. And I think the huge confusion that we have is that anthropologically, witchcraft has been used or any sort of magic by any sort of people throughout the world. And the, anthropolog the anthropologists who created this, the archaeologists even who created this, this started to occur in the 1930s during British colonialism by Christian white men. So they called everything witchcraft. So you have to remember, in antiquity, English is witch. You know, that is an English word. It is not an African word. It is not an Australian word. It is... They would have had their own terms. Conquering white people who went there and said, you're a witch, this is witchcraft, you're a witch doctor. But we're stuck with that terminology being in the popular mind, being in the dictionary, and so a lot of people who are practicing magic jump on that definition without really understanding. It has nothing to do with the movement of witchcraft that they are inevitably linked to in some way. When Gerald Gardner came out of the broom closet as the first public witch who said I am a living human being practicing witchcraft and I am in the religion of witchcraft and this is what we really do. When that movement started, he was challenging all of those preconceived ideas. There are still people using those preconceived ideas within the magical community today. I think I over answered the question. So but I'll you stop. hit on it. Yeah. Um, I think what would I call it? I'd probably call it witchcraft in some instances. It depends on what you're talking about. Um, the thing is, is witchcraft, here's one... There is folk magic Yeah. that was practiced by British witches. Sure, tons of folk I'll magic. I'll give you that. Which is ladders yeah. and, and, you know, um, sure. certain cunning men books that exist or whatever. in every culture Herbalism, in every part of the world. And um, stop it. Yeah, tying, you know, prayers and fairy trees in, in Ireland or whatever. The thing is, is um, I don't think that this is, like you said, it's such a tricky thing to answer sometimes because we're coming at it from such a unique perspective of, of, of religious witchcraft. But that's what this show is about. Yeah. You know, when we created Coven so it was for this that's perspective. That's the language I'm yeah. comfortable with. Yeah. And, and I don't really go outside of it a we lot. We don't want to give you the generic pagan No, community. I don't want to give you yeah. some generic answer yeah. just to make you feel better. To me, witchcraft is a religion, and, and, and I think it's, 
it's it's only really experienced through witchcraft is not craft. magic. No, you know historically it has not. I know people say no. Well, the craft of the witch is magic. It's it's really not. That word means that you're practicing the craft of the witch. What is that craft? You could decide it's magic. Sure. You know, and then you have to decide what kind. Because here's the real thing. I think most people don't realize. Alexandrians, Gardnerians, the priesthood of witchcraft has a magical system unto itself. We have a unique magical system that is taught to initiates. Mm -hmm. Maybe that system is the craft of the witch. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. and also... Um, but it's not all magic. No, and historically, yeah. the word witch was used in different contexts in English. Most of the church documents are actually written in Latin, not English, and they use very different terms for things. Um, that's why I... Here's what I have a belief, and oh. I'm going to be... You know, yeah, I'm going to answer that one too. I'm going to be a very specific, very specific in how I say this because it's complicated. I believe that I practice the mysteries. Those are far beyond British traditional witchcraft, Alexandrian or Gardnerian. I believe they existed in the in antiquity in Eleusis in various cults like the cult of Magna Mater and, and various other places. I think they exist in mystic Christianity. I think they exist in Tantra in Hinduism. I think they exist in Taoism in lots of places. I practice the mysteries. Through the incarnation of British witchcraft, which is one amongst many. So on a deeper we level... We are a mystery cult. Exactly. On a deeper level, the debate has ceased to matter to me because yeah. I live within it. And so I don't need to use that externalizing language anymore. And the people who are constantly arguing about what it means to me, I'm just like, okay, honey, argue all you want. The way like, I look at it is sort of at the as above, so below... In the spirit of it, we're a mystery cult. Yes. We function just like all the ancient mystery cults did. In the land of Britain, we are a fertility cult. Exactly. You know, and I think we are both of these things. Mm -hmm. yeah. The cosmic and the terrestrial. Yeah. So my cosmic self is a mystery priest. My earthly self is a witch priest. And they are the same thing. So Frank's question um, was the one I think you were pointing at. Um, who gets to be called an elder? And what's their role in the Alexandrian tradition within a coven? And between covens, that's a very interesting point. That's a universal answer. And how would it be different from Gardnerian? Uh, it's the same. An elder in the in the craft, a coven elder, is is any high priesthood that is in the coven. Uh, so if you have a if you've got six high priests and priestesses in the coven, and you you would convene the elders, it would be them. You know, they're the elder initiates. They're the senior initiates. Uh, outside of that, there's no usage of elder in the craft. Within the communities, public communities, uh, when we say elders, we're talking about, you know, you know, Gerald Gardner, Doreen Valiente, the people who the foundational elders witches. of the movement of the craft. It's not an official title though. Where it actually comes from is the Book of Shadows, and it's elder initiates in a coven. Mm -hmm. And if there is ever any sort of diplomatic, for instance, if a high priest, a new high priestess, is going to be elected independently uh, in Gardnerian craft, if there are elders, they convene amongst themselves to elect. Let's say they've got three third degree priestesses, so they convene amongst themselves to decide who's going to be the next high priestess. So there is that, you know, that moment when the bishops decide, yeah. you know, within that small little nucleus. We're using the word bishop tongue-in-cheek. Uh, you, you're, you're I started for it. That. It works, but we both understand that system, so yeah. I don't know if other people do. Um, so, you know, it does happen, but yes, it it's doesn't actually exist outside of that. It's not a, an official title. It doesn't have any power unless it's convened within a coven. Yep. Um, but when you hear us use it, you know, we've sort of caught on to the broader sense as well. It's We're talking about the founders of these movements. Um, I have heard people refer to, you know, high priesthood that's been around for a while as elders, and they are, because they're elders in their coven, I, I guess. I mean, there's a literal sense you know? to that word that I think makes sense. I don't like being called an elder. You will never like that term. Oh. Even though you are... Okay. I don't consider myself a broader craft elder because I'm still very no, new. No, but I mean like... Uh, I'm an elder in my coven. But not your favorite term, I'm no. guessing. No, it's a horrible term. That's why, you know why I say... I make this joke sometimes at mommy drinks. You know why I say that? Because I don't want to say papa on us. Because like... <laughs> say what? Like grandpa or whatever where you're one above. You usually call me mom. That's the joke. Which I have to wonder how Christine feels about that because you say it right in front of her. Mom drinks a lot. Well, I mean, you you're usually <laughs> dressed more femininely than she is. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> She's far more beautiful. But yeah. Anywho, 
So, yes, she might be the butch in the relationship. It's true. Wow. Um, <laughs> Where's the lie? Any other questions? Uh, we, finally, we caught up to that one. Once right. again, you can call in 504-321-3472 and unveil the mystery. The voice is a lot. <laughs> Wait, let's do it. That's what I feel about that. That's what I feel about that 2 a.m. sad Comedy Central, we've went off the air advertisement for a sex chat line voice. There we go. It's beautiful. Um, uh, questions. It seemed like we had a lot. We have caught up to most of them, I think, because I went through pretty quickly there. Oh, that means we have to ask each other questions. How oh, gross. Um, so, Levi, we've talked about this recently. Um, you know, what do you see as some primary differences between Gardneri and Alexander Craft based on your knowledge? Um. I think some of the biggest things for me that I've noticed, especially especially getting to know more Gardnerians, we are more equal, I think, in our treatment of priests and priestesses in some instances than, than some Gardnerian lines. Some American Gardnerian lines are much more matriarchal than we are. That does not mean that we are patriarchal. It just means that there are in certain ritual roles. Seeing as he calls me mom. Yeah, that's the joke, right? In that there are certain ritual roles or whatever um, that are seem more equalized in Alexandrian craft um, then in Gardnerian craft, you know, I think that's something that I've noticed pretty heavily. Um, Alexandrian craft does seem more ritually, what's the word I'm looking for? Beautiful. Um, and that's not a judgment. That sounds like a judgment, but Alexandrian craft does seem more, it draws from a lot of ceremonial things from Kabbalah and whatnot. And there does seem to be a little bit more of a focus on ritual being elevated. And in some Gardnerian instances, it seems more shamanistic in a way. And the biggest difference I've noticed lately, and I don't know if Final totally agrees with me, maybe, is I think Alexandrian craft's more cosmic. Like, I think we were heavily influenced by, like, Franz Barden and, you know, theosophical ideas or whatever. I think the Gardnerians are a little bit more earthy. And that's not a judgment on either one, but I think Alexandrian's a little bit more cosmic. I think if we were to take the charge of the goddess, the Gardnerians are the green earth part and we're the queen of stars part. Like, I just feel that way Interesting sometimes. analogy. I kind of feel yeah. that way sometimes. Yeah. Like, Alexandrians that I meet are always a little bit more cosmic. Yeah. Like, it's the star goddess, and it's, it's you know, Kabbalah, and, you know, connecting to the gods. And Gardnerians very much like, here's a recipe for a flying ointment. You can have the world. We want the universe. Kind of, though. Greedy for power. Kind of. Yeah. We're a little bit more yeah. starry, and, um, and a little bit more influenced by some of those theosophical concepts and new age concepts that have worked their way into our visualizations and our hermetics, and I like it, so. I can't disagree with any of that. You know, I think that uh, as movements, I think that Alexandrians have stayed occultists as a movement. I'm not talking about individuals, because I know there are plenty of Gardnerians who are occultists. I know some fabulous occultists who are Gardnerians. Mm -hmm. You know, I know some extremely talented Gardnerians who'd put many Alexandrians to shame. Um, but... I think as a movement, I think Gardnerians really tried to sort of like crawl back into the caves and the Celtic mud a little bit too much sometimes. Um, had its purpose, because I do think that it's responsible for the entire goddess movement in the West, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, we owe, you know, there's, it's no secret we come out of, of that movement. So, you know, um, you know, kissing cousins, I guess. Um, it's hard because I know so much now. I don't see Gardnerians as one thing. Yeah, I agree. You know, when I Gardnerian, see online, and British. I don't see Alexandrians as one thing. I know some real loser Alexandrians, you know, and I, maybe I'm not supposed to say that, but I know some Alexandrians who have no occult knowledge, don't know anything about pantheons, don't know anything about the occult. They just happen to get initiated. Um, right place, I, right time. I know Gardnerians who are so hung up on being Gardnerian, they can't see past their own arse, you know, but I also know fabulous people in both, you know, by no means think that because someone's initiated Gardnerian or Alexandrian, they're necessarily more magical than you, because I think 90% of the time they are, but once in a while you get an initiation that doesn't take, you know, everyone makes mistakes, you know, even even witches. Except for Dolly Parton. So, you know, Dolly Parton does not I make, make mistakes. mistakes. <laughs> Porter Wagner once, it went south. Nope. So Lizzie has a question I want us to end with. So Lizzie, I don't want you to think that that's the perfect question to end with. Time but I'm saying when we get this, I'm gonna. I don't want her to think that I'm not answering your questions. But you asked such a good one for us to end with that I'm gonna do some of the ones that came after. So uh, oh, you're saving that. Yeah, because oh, okay. I think that's literally the perfect question to end on when we get there. 
Rodriguez has a, uh, Rodriguez Mystic has a good question. He says he's an initiate of both Gardnerian and Alexandrian in the UK, mm-hmm. and that he has heard that sometimes we don't guest in Gardnerians in the, in America. Would I you abso- guest in a Gardnerian? Oh, absolutely. Same. What you? What is his name? Rodriguez. Uh, Rodriguez. I don't know if I've ever met you or not because it's an online thing. Um, we our lineage comes from. Um, Temple of the Mother, and in fact, our teacher lives in Oswestry. You know, my teacher lives in Oswestry. So, our training is very UK. We weren't trained in the Ameri- you know, the American fashion. Uh, even though I do have lots of American c- contacts here, I'm American, um, so I have more American contacts than I do British. But yes, we would. We have actually invited mm-hmm. Gardnerians yeah. in before. In fact, I will go this far. And based on my training, um, if a Gardnerian wanted to join my coven. I wouldn't reinitiate them. They would just be allowed to come in at the degree they already were because I see the initiation as already being valid for what it is. And that's actually what Alex did. You know, he didn't do dual initiations because he was initiated into witchcraft just like Gerald Gardner and Doreen were. So if you were already initiated into witchcraft from the Book of Shadows... Why would you need to do it again? You know, maybe one person put their hand on their knee or jumped around twice. You know, little things that Americans might get caught up on. But um, I do see us as the same thing. I absolutely would guest in. Um, However, once they start comparing or making note about preference being disrespectful in my group, then the welcome would end. But that has never occurred. Never. Yeah. And speaking as a third degree, I would not reinitiate a validly initiated gardener. No, I mean, if they want lineage, if they wanted the lineage, there's ways we could do that. Um, you just like the Gardnerians have ways they can do that. I would no, the initiations already. That's there. just my own personal thing. A valid initiations already it's occurred. It's a valid initiation. Like, how many times are you going to bug the same gods? Like Catholics don't <laughs> rebaptize Protestants if they were no. baptized in a Trinitarian uh, form. I think we're in the same the same soup, but I do think there's a different philosophy. So the only danger I have about dual lineage, which I in a sense have it myself, is. You know, what are you practicing? I could not run a Alexandrian slash California Gardenarian coven. These things don't match at all. No. And you know, why would you? They don't match. So, and the things that do match, well, they're going to happen anyway. You know? Yeah, exactly. So, so um, Edward asked, do Alexandrians memorize for their circle or do you use scripts? In my lineage, we were taught to memorize. And I believe that if you memorize something, it's more powerful because um, you don't have to think about what you're saying. You know, you are trying to work magic. If you're having to concentrate on what you're saying or if you're having to read off something, it's very distracting and it's not beautiful. Uh, so, yeah, I don't like uh, the passing around of books and things. And in British, you know, uh, ancestry, the occult in general, memorization was generally something priesthoods were expected to be able to do. To do. Um, that's the way that you become the living Book of Shadows, which I think is the real Book of Shadows, because what's in that person can, you know, can survive anything. So, um, yeah, no, we do memorize. I The only time we ever read off of something usually is in an initiation when the Book of Shadows is used because that ritual has to be precise. And if yeah. someone has not performed it many times, they may not know the words. But generally, you never see someone reading a script in any of our rituals. Yeah, it's very rare. Um, sh- I think I skipped one. Oh, um, Light of Diane asked, how did you know that Alexandrian witchcraft in particular was for you? Who is the question for? Either of us. Well, you go first. Um, how did I know it was for me? Because um, it worked. That's the thing is I think one of the things is we do get obsessed with titles and we get obsessed with lineages and things like that external to them. It's one thing to argue from within, which makes sense because you're debating, philosophizing, modern, philosophizing. Healthy debate. Healthy perfectly debate. Perfectly fine. But externally it's weird. I no, never understand why I'll so... I'll kick you off of every group yeah, if you don't agree with me. I never understand why so many non-initiants argue about what any of this means when it's irrelevant to them anyway. Yeah. Um, so for me, the reason I chose it is because it's the thing that worked. I, you know, I told Brian one time, God showed up. You know, I tried to in all these other different spiritual traditions, and nobody showed up. Was there power? Was there something interesting? Probably sure. Who cares? But like, if I'm not once that happened, once I made contact, you know, you know, not to what does they say in that drag queen show? Not that I will Jody Foster this kind of behavior, but once I made contact, like, what would be the point of searching for something else? 
right? Mm. So if, if you if you out there watching make contact in a Gardnerian setting, mm. be, girl, sir, mm. be Gardnerian. Yeah. Like, you know, if you find it in the OTO and the minute that veil drops and Babylon is there and you just fall to your knees and that's the goddess, good, stay that. Please, mm. God, go for the AA. Like, wherever you're going to find that divine connection and grow into your higher, you know, grow into your true self, shall we say, that's where you need to be. And for me, that happened to be the tradition founded by Alex and Maxine. That, that is what stuck. That is what spoke to my soul. So why would I leave it? Uh, you know, my story could be rather long, and I'm not going to do that to you. It's told in other places, um, including my book, um, Initiation and Call now. Call now. Um, <laughs> which is, that's, that is a nice thing about my book. You know, like, you've got all these questions. Read my book. Read my book. Um, that is a handy thing to have. Um, Originally, I wanted to be Gardnerian because my thought process, like anyone else's, is like that's the older thing, so it must be the best thing, you know. And I think that's a natural assumption for somebody who's into ancient religions, the occult, whatever. The oldest thing's got to be the best thing, you know. It's actually kind of a silly theory if you think about it. It's kind of yeah. like saying the older medicine must be the best medicine. Not always the case. Um, Leeches, anybody? Yes. But, um, you know, that was my intent, you know, and through pomp and circumstance, um, I received additional initiations that had dual lineage, Alexandrian and Gardnerian, as well as some lineage that, you know, was questionable, you know, as some lineages have. Uh, I had just received it. Jehovah's Witness. And I had been put onto sort of the platform, you know. I had just married Christian, you know, I was... Did you just grimace? Did I grimace? No, it's fine. Oh. Um, you know, I, well, I just married Christian. I wasn't really quite prepared for public life in any way, shape, or form. That was not, you know, that was not in my mind or training or anything. So I went on, on to these Facebook groups, and I was just sort of like, hello, I'm an initiate too, Expecting? Why do you sound like Pippin? Because like, <laughs> I thought I was. I thought it was going to be a big hug fest. Jolly good. <laughs> I truly, honestly, sincerely, in my heart, thought it was going to be a big hug fest. Oh no, baby! You know, I was new to social media. I was new to being a public witch. I thought, and I was treated horribly. You know, and this isn't a you know cry me story because once again, Cobra. So being treated horribly doesn't make me cry. It makes me watch and poison people, you know, spit and all that sort of thing. But um, silently, however, um, so you know, cobras silently don't, cobras he says, don't bark in a in a, in a giant lacuna of self awareness. <laughs> um, well, that's the that's learning how to take something that was used against me and turning it to my advantage. Well done. You know, if I'm going to be in the public spotlight, well, then finally I learned how to use it. Um, so this isn't a, a, an ode to anything, but I think, honestly, it was a part of my initiation. Whenever I've received an initiation, I've had a public controversy that had nothing to do with the initiation. Except that first time, my public controversy was actually about my legitimate initiation. Granted, I had a member of the upline who was basically giving a bolarchy lineage, you know, fine. Uh, wasn't me, you know. <laughs> like, I mean, wasn't me. I but it. I, you know, I was attacked uh, unnecessarily. And the Alexandrian tradition was a part of the lineage I was given, and the initiation I was given was Alexandrian. So it was, you know, which was not my plan. You know, I think the goddess, you know, the gods, I think that that was meant to happen. You know, higher self, I don't know, whatever. I'd always been fascinated with Alex and Maxine, you know, throughout my whole yeah, agreed. craft. Agreed. And it was always this, like, sort of secret thing. And I remember when I was talking about getting reinitiated, I sort of brought it up. And it was quite funny, because at the time, Christian said, over my dead body, you know, because he still had some hang-ups with some individuals. And, you know, I was like, oh, okay. Um... It's how it turned out, you know, and the, you know, the other thing is the instruments of the gods used, you know, when everyone was picking on me, Maxine plucked me out of the fire, you know, uh, act of compassion, curiosity, let's look at this for a minute, we could always throw it back in, I don't know what was going through her mind. What kind of analogy <laughs> you know? is this? I, I don't know what was going through her oh, mind, but I, I have to, you know, eternally be thankful because she really, she didn't care 
about anything that was going on other than I think she saw that I was sincere in in my quest. Agreed. And, you know, she, she, like us, she's not, you know, she's not kids' gloves necessarily. She told me right off the bat, I, you know, she said to, and it's actually kind of a no-brainer, she said, I wasn't re- well received as an initiate. No, no, she no. wasn't. Was she? she? Wasn't. You know, she was picked Neither on was a Alex. thousand times worse than I ever was. You know, and it was. I think it was her way of saying, "Kid, get a thick skin. You know, get ready for more." You know, uh, I think she saw something, but I, I really, truly believe that it was. You know, yeah, my intent was to get initiated into the priesthood of the goddess, and my intent was to become gardenarian. But what happened was the goddess said. This is what I want you to do. Yeah. And like Levi said, I'm so plugged into that now. I'm so connected. I make contact that way. I couldn't really imagine. I could never see myself as Gardnerian at this point. Like it's not conceivable in my mind because it would be unplugging myself from something, from something yeah. that is already flowing with enormous it's my own, current. Yeah. yeah. You know what my favorite part of that whole story is? What? That you started out by saying I'm not going to make it long. Um, it could have been much longer. I know it could have. <laughs> Trust me, I've heard it. No, um, no judgment. I'm just kidding. Banter. It's important. Um, so, I think we can move on to Lizzie's question as our final question because by the time we get through all the different aspects of it, we will be nearing. <laughs> by the time Brian's done, we'll be on the show. I'm trying to be nice about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to just go around that, but yes, by the time your wordy ass finishes this question. It'll be 10.30. I want to go home. I will try to... I will no. try to... She asked a very... Fi- the reason I saved Lizzie's question for the end is because she updated it a little bit, and it's very interesting how she worded it. Um, I'm assuming she. I don't mean to assume your gender, darling. But um, she said... Um, but I'm going to anyway. Um, she said, uh, how do you see the future of Alexandrian Gardnerian uh, traditions? But then she followed it up by saying, with how their relationship has evolved in the United States... And now we have friendly connection with one another, not mis- not mixing traditions anymore, but open dialogue. Um, what do you see that developing as? Well, I think that they're actually more friendly in the UK. I, d- I don't think that that connection really has occurred in the United States. We have a lot of dual lineage. That's not a connection. Yep. So being Agreed. in a coven and saying I'm Alexandrian Gardnerian, that's not, that's not a connection. And, unless you've been a part of the living culture and... My opinion is, based on my experience and what I've seen, every coven is really only connected to one living culture. They might have a lot of ideas and knowledge about the other one. Like, I've got a lot of ideas and knowledge about Gardnerian craft, like a lot of things. I've been told by Gardnerians recently, well, you know some things some people don't think you should know, you know, and that I get it. But I've never been a part of that living culture. I'm a part of the Alexandrian living culture, and I, I feel like most people I know who are dual lineage, or especially in the United States, are really a part of the Gardnerian culture. They're not a part. They may have met Alexandrians. They may have met Maxine. They may have met Janet. They may have you know, had conversations yeah. with people, but they're not a part of that living culture. Their life has been spent in another cast of the priesthood. So uh, I think that that's still in its infancy. I think it's going to take uh, Alexandrian groups who are very self-confident and willing to be open to Gardnerians for that to happen here. Um, what purpose does it serve? You know, that's, that's a whole nother question, if it serves one at all. Um, you know, I think that it's great that we've got people who realize that there are too few of us to fall out and that our diversity is important. And this is the, pri- this is the only priesthood of the goddess in the West, and in a sense, the only priesthood of the goddess in the world. You know, um, so I think it's really important as a movement that we do have that sort of support of other priesthood, even if their philosophies are a little different than ours. Um, What's going on in the rest of the witchcraft world is true spiritual seeking, Mm -hmm. a lot of hobbies. I'm sorry to say that. A lot of hobby witches. I like knitting and A witches. lot of, I need to have something about myself, a personal identity, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are in a generation of thrill, fame seeking, like, and right now being, throwing witchcraft into the how I'm going to get famous thing on Instagram and all that is, Buzzfeed is a on, big yeah. thing right now. It seems like an easy go-to. I've got nothing else going on. I'll call myself a witch and light some candles. You know, um, you know. Mm-hmm. 
It, it is what it is. I mean, if you know who Harmony Knight is, you know how bullshit can become popular. You know, yeah. um, you know, horrible representative of anything and not actually truly connected to anything, but extremely popular, you know. But it doesn't mean anything because the people it's popular to have nothing to do with what we're doing. Gardenarians and Alexandrians are always going to be the North Star of the craft. And I think in the future, you'll still have true hardcores You'll have the, you know, Shiite Alexandrians and the hard guards, and you'll have the in-betweeners, and you'll have watered-down versions. Mm -hmm. I think the power has proved that this thing will test, you know, last the test of time. You know, I've heard people say, oh, I think it's going to go away. I think it's going to go extinct. I think maybe it is for them, or maybe for some elders in the craft, because they're not a part of it in that way anymore. <laughs> It yeah. seems like it is, maybe. But when you're in a coven, like Levi and I are, and you know it's alive. We meet them, we know them. And you know it's living. And you know it's not that far-fetched from what was happening in the 50s and the 60s. You know, um, it is still alive. But I do think we will always be the few, not the many. You know, people used to say about the OTO, people forget that at one point the OTO was moribund. Like, I mean, literally almost dead as an organization. Mm -hmm. It had almost no teachers. It was very small. It had no presence in the world until a revolution by some very, very, you know, important and charismatic and intelligent people. That organization was on the verge of death. And now it is enormous again. So this idea that, you know, yeah, things dwindle and they die. They also go through rebirth and things go through cycles. Some um, things need to die, but I think the traditions will live on. I do think they'll live yeah. on. And I think some of them will be meaner and leaner. Yeah. You know, they'll and lose some of a them lot will of fluff. Become something else. And some of them will evolve into you know, something. Some else. of them will embrace the social justice warrior cause so much they will not be gardener and They'll cease to be anymore. a religion, they'll be a political um, movement. But they might still use the label and eventually people will be like join it's kinda like the Reformed Catholic Church. Like people join it knowing what it is, but it ain't connected to the Vatican. No. And I, but I do think you will always it have was covens. at one time you will always have yeah. covens working the system that yeah. matter and those will be for the people who really need it want it and will flourish within it the mysteries are eternal and the other thing is is people love to threaten me I don't know if you get this feeling as an initiate where I know you do because it's happened to you in my presence where people are almost eager to convince you it's going to die yes they can't wait to, to tell you how bad it is and yeah. how you know it's going to die and blah 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 I always, and you've seen me go maybe I know, and I always just go uh huh great Maybe. The mysteries will never die, honey. Does you know? it make you feel good to think that? You know, um, yeah, good for you. I think that you know any priesthood has its positives and its negatives, and of course, like anything involving human beings, it's had its ups, its downs, and its conflicts. And human emotion begins to play a role. Sometimes the ego can't see the truth, and the ego is something everyone deals with. Not you know, me. and, you know, it, it is something in all of our faces on a consistent... I think more so initiates have to deal with ego. Okay. You know, it's in our faces constantly, our own and others. You know, and so... Because ego is not bad inherently, but it is also your greatest teacher and your greatest challenger, you know, as an, any good teacher would be. You know, we're stuck to confront the fact that we are not it. You know, Alex was not Alexandrian craft. Gardner was not Gardnerian craft. Neither are you nor I, you or I. Mm -hmm. uh, we're all pieces of something that's been invoked and is bigger than any human being on earth has ever been. These have become living traditions. And you have groups of people who politically want to try to control that. They can't. And the most beautiful thing the craft ever introduced was the autonomy of the coven. And that was the most genius thing, whether it was Gerald's idea or accidental or the gods. That coven autonomy is the survival. Because as long as there's one coven on earth that is practic practicing the craft in truth, it has the same chance to start a movement as Gerald Gardner did. Mm -hmm. As long as one seed is left fertile, a forest could be on the horizon. So I think the craft will always go on eternally. Labels will change. Even if it's not called witchcraft. Yeah. The mysteries Christ will live forever. Christian used to say, once witchcraft becomes too watered down, the real witches will start calling themselves so something, something else. else. Yep. And I do know a lot of witches who just call themselves initiates now. Yep. 
because people can't really argue with that. They can't identify with it. You know, uh, but I have seen it happen. You know, uh, oh, I'm an oh, I'm an initiate too. Of what? You know, uh, you know, I'm self-initiated. No. The mysteries are eternal. Okay, um, the mysteries are that must make us eternal. Same. They will live forever. They have lived forever. They have never died. Anyway, oh. so any, we've got time for one more question if we're brief. Do you want to ask each other one quick one? I already asked you one. Last time. Ask you one? Okay. We talked about the future of craft, Alexander and Gardnerian. Mm-hmm. But what do you see as the, as the most important thing somebody who was looking at the Alexandrian tradition specifically, who's watching this right now, could take away from that? What do they need to know if they're going to approach this tradition? You know, I think that's something you have to find within yourself. You know, I don't think anyone can tell you that. I think that um, if you want to be a priest of, or a priestess of witchcraft, you know, I think that my advice would be that Gardnerian and Alexandrian witchcraft are the, the only way to go if you want to be in priesthood. If you just want to practice the religion of witchcraft and you don't want that kind of dedication, well, there's a myriad of things you can do. And if you just want a coven or a tradition, there are myriads of things you can do. And some of those covens, in a way, are their own priesthood. They're just not, you know, they don't have the the historic side to it um, or the support or the training or the power behind them yet. In the future, there could be other witchcraft traditions that we say the power has proven its way. Mm -hmm. It just hasn't happened yet. You know, um, so, you know, we'll see, you know, time will tell. But these are priesthoods. They are priesthoods of the goddess. They are priesthoods of witchcraft, you know. And Alexandrian is, you know, I'm sure we're alluring because we're so attractive. Humble, and really. It's also said power attracts. Humility. You know, uh, humility doesn't attract. Power attracts, you know. Um, no, I think that uh, no one's attract. Oh, I want to know that person because they're so humble. Um <laughs> I, I think we might find it an endearing quality, but it doesn't make you walk endearing across the street. Endearing is a good word for it. Yeah. Um, I can't really advise you because I think that I think that you need to know what you want. I would say read as many books as you can by Alexandrians, interact as much as you can with Alexandrians by going to soirees, you know, because it is also about the coven. You know, there are Alexandrian covens that. Sh- Almost everything I'm saying would not make sense. Agreed. Mm-hmm. I've seen them. You know, and I'm not saying that to say they're wrong. Maybe I'm the crazy one. You well, know? I mean, we've established so that. So you are, very different grounds. you know, dealing with an individual group as well. As a platform, I think the big difference between Alexandrian witchcraft and Gardnerian witchcraft is, you know, uh, Gardnerian witchcraft has the first right of succession uh, outside of the American lines it's the oldest thing you know and the reason I say that is because it's historically true um, and because of the differences Um, but you know I think they can be a little bit more controlling and I think that they're less about uh, I I think that if you're in a Gardnerian coven and you want to have your own witchcraft YouTube channel you might run into problems where in most Alexandrian covens it's like you do you, boo. You know, like, we, especially in my coven, like, it's freedom. Like, as long as they're not going against the craft or they're or not, like, giving our oaths. secrets yeah. away or oaths, like, they are allowed to be as loud and proud and w- as what they want and be the fullest witch they can be. But that's also me coming from a, a bias. I'm sure there are Gardnerian covens out there who probably would feel the same way. But based and on... Coven my coven is a big thing. My knowledge and experience... About, and it matters. Um, you know, Gardnerians might be more likely to pull on the leash. Yeah. Um, some Alexandrians might try, it just doesn't really work very well on an Alexandrian. It's kind Only of like sexual trying to teach a pit bull how to poodle dance. And on that note. Yeah. Um, so thank you all very much Absolutely. for joining us for Alexandrians versus Gardnerians on episode no two, season two of Covendom. Uh, we will try to meet next week. What is our, our theme going next to be? Next week is Christmas, isn't it? On Friday? That can't be Christmas now. No, not Christmas, but next Friday is the 20th. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's good. We can do that. 
Uh, what topic? We've got time to think about it. Maybe give us some suggestions and we'll announce it in the next few days because I didn't really have one pre-planned. So if you've got any topic suggestions, Let's we'll take the, them into consideration. You know what? Um, it's the solstice coming up. It's Christmas time. It's right after Thanksgiving and we've never done a show on, on just the festivals of witchcraft, the Sabbaths. Be a little That's because I don't want to teach them. What no, not teach on them, but talk a little bit about maybe like the mythological cycles that we pull from. We could consider that. The Sabbaths, idea. right? How do you do your, so, how do you do uh, Christmas? Give, give us some sort of idea about what you guys, you know, want to talk about and we'll take the next couple of days to yeah, consider it. send it on Facebook. And then six. YouTube. Anyway, thank you all very much. Have a great evening. Enjoy, guys. There were covens in Europe. That's what they're called, the, um, the, the congregation. Covens in Europe, in America, and in Australia, and they have one right here. That whole bunch.